Don't we all like those unboxing videos? Okay, for today I have an unboxing prepared for you. Before going there, let me introduce myself. I'm Andre, Director of Economical Solutions Corporation. We are known on the internet as impactetching.com and for the last 10 years we've been offering unique, revolutionary impact etching machines that hit the stone with, physically with sharp diamond. You can find us on the internet by going to Impact Etching on Facebook or YouTube. So, um, this episode is about getting image for engraving machine. And by getting, I mean, there's multiple ways of obviously obtaining it. Somebody might bring it to you on a flash drive, in which case it's likely a digital image taken by a camera, quite possibly that's the image taken with a camera as of like 10, 15 years ago when they were really bad and really low resolution, you just go with it. There's nothing you can do. Uh, what quite often happens is people just send you the image from their smartphone and uh, instead of sending you actual image, they might just take a screenshot of the photograph and send it to you, which is really bad. So in that case, mm, just ask your customer, hey, instead of taking me the screenshot, maybe send me the original image. You just need to guide them through that. I mean, go open the image, open that icon that allows you to share and then send it to us. Uh, quite often though, the image they bring to you is in the paper form. So uh, what is the best way of obtaining the image, of digitizing the image that's been brought to you in as a paper photograph? So that's the question we're going to discuss today. Uh, you will probably have in your office either that huge white box which does like copying, faxing, scanning, or you have some combo device which kind of maybe smaller but does the same. So those devices are really the worst way of scanning images. And let me explain to you why. Uh, the reason is that those devices are typically dumbed down to the level that it makes very easy to actually scan those images, but this dumbing down has happened at the expense of control. Quite often they will actually not even allow you to scan image in any raster format, kind of coming back to the subject of the previous video, or are, they will just save it as PDF. And PDF is really terrible format to, uh, to, 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 to save the images in, because PDF in itself is a highly lossy format, which is not even image format, it's a publishing format, but it can have images. So, our, uh, our, my company also offers the image editing services to our customers and whenever we get image sent to us in PDF it's usually uh, not a very pleasant experience because we, we're trying to do our best to convert it usually at the loss of quality. So you will ask what is absolutely the best way to obtain the images that you to, uh, to, to digitize the image that you obtained in a paper form. And here's the answer. Ta-da! I promised you unboxing, okay? So, the best way to digitize the image that you obtained in paper form is you go on Amazon, of course, and you get yourself a $50 flatbed scanner, just like I did. In my case it was 70 Canadian dollars, but obviously Canadian dollars less powerful than American. In US it will probably cost you 50 bucks. I urge all of you, if you have any kind of engraving machine or you're planning to use one, get this wonderful device. It will set you back 50 bucks and it will give you full control over the parameter of the parameters of the scanner. This scanner, despite being dirt cheap, it can actually scan with insane resolutions of up to 4800 dpx. Incredible. And it will allow you to actually specify explicitly in the driver when you scan what kind of resolution you're going to use. Uh, granted, at least for example our machines, because they hit the stone physically with the sharp diamond, 
the more practical resolution is around 100 dpi. But as far as image is concerned, you should actually try to scan the image with resolution that is as high as practical. I mean, you should at least scan the photograph that is brought to you with, I would say, six or 900 dpi while controlling the compression. I uh, remember we talked uh, in a previous episode about JPEG being a lossy format where you can control compression and control how much quality is deteriorated to achieve smaller size. This uh, device and the software that comes with it will allow you to actually control the compression ratio. And what I have is uh, some kind of Epson printer. It does not matter which brand you get. I mean, there I'm quite sure there's other printers from different brands. The idea is you get the regular flatbed scanner, which looks, I'm continuing my unboxing, which looks approximately like this. You put it on the desk, you will have full control over it, you will not have to share some combo device with everybody else in the office, and it will provide you with absolutely everything you need. Okay, so flatbed scanner, simple, USB connector, that's it. Um, now let me show you what the driver... I did go to Google and searched for the driver, my, well, my perfection, and I misspelled it. So I did go to Google and searched for driver for my printer, which is in this particular case called Epson Perfection V39. As I said, you don't need to get yourself the same one, just get yourself a cheaper flatbed scanner. Uh, in my case, it's this one, and there's a link to support page, and from support page, there's a way to install the drivers. So you don't necessarily need to install a combo package, which comes with a lot of junk, and uh, just installing the driver is completely sufficient. So once I install the driver, I go to my raster editor, and I hope if you watched the previous episode, you understand the difference between raster and vector. Uh, so my raster editor of choice is Corel Paint Shop Pro. And I'm going to File, Import from Scanner or Camera. Here I have a choice of two scanners that are connected. And this one, are, this is the one that I just uh, installed. And uh, it allows you, to, so this is the, the most important part. In here, you can choose what kind of um, what kind of quality resolution etc cetera, etc cetera, you use for example i can increase the resolution from um, the standard 100 to i don't know 600 or 900 i can say that it's a color picture and i think um, let me try so if i do the preview first it uh, scans the photograph And uh, then ultimately, I know already that it will scan with 900 DPIs. And once I scanned it, oh, this, this one is very fast. Okay, so it scanned my photograph. And as, as you can see, even though it's black and white, the, the, the color scan is actually, it's a color scan with 900 DPIs, which gives me very, very good resolution, even though it's obviously offset print, I think. I'm actually, I'm scanning a very old uh, photo album that I bought when I was in Germany about the World War I. I think it was published in like 1921, and it shows by the village of Cambrai, which I believe in France, and I believe it's probably German troops marching past broken or exploded British tank. That's what it seems to me. And uh, now I have full control of how I'm going to save this image in any kind of format. For example, I can choose JPEG, I can choose the multitude of formats, and more importantly, remember how we talked about controlling the resolution. Now I have full control. It's not some dumbed down driver that decides that they, they want to scan it and store it in a certain format. Now we have full control of compression. If I save this file with a lot of compression of like say 
uh, even though it will be JPEG, I'm more or less guaranteed that it will be very, very good quality. Um, some drivers give you more, some drivers give you less control over the parameters. Uh, so that was from scanner. Let me try this one. No, this one doesn't work. What else could we control here when we scan this image? Again, let's just quickly check. It, it, it largely depends on the driver. Um, sorry. So if I go there again, so I have custom settings and uh, this particular software doesn't allow me to control as much as I want it, to be honest. It, for example, it doesn't give me the depth of color. It doesn't tell me how many bits of color are like 256 colors or are like 8-bit color or 16-bit color. It does not allow me to control that, unfortunately, but it's still not bad. I mean, it, it, uh, it allows me to control resolution, which is probably the most important parameter because I assume that once it's scanned, it's shown in my, in my program in uncompressed format, and then I can decide what to do with it. Okay, so to summarize, uh, give yourself a gift of $50 flatbed scanner from Amazon. If you want to get fancy, maybe find the one that uh, can also scan the negatives, like the, the films, in case somebody brings you negatives. Uh, but don't go above 100 bucks. I mean, $50 scanner will absolutely suffice. It will give you full control over settings in the process of scanning. You will have full physical control over it. You will, you will not have to share it with anybody in the office. And that's all you need to create beautiful scans that you can later, with our help or yourself, process, edit, and feed it into the etching machine. Thank you for watching. If you find it useful, please go on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash impact etching, and like the page so that you'll get notified uh, about the next episodes of this series. Thank you.